Jumbo, Caribou, Ubani, Kidogo. What that means is hello and welcome to my house, which is very small. Uh, I got the idea to do a video blog about what I'm going to be doing to the house uh, after watching some episodes of Tiny House Nation on the FYI network featuring John and Zach uh, when I was home in the States last year. And what I want to do is I want to kind of chronicle how I come about changing this small house into something that's uh, livable and usable. Uh, we do have some things that we're going to have to work through though. Uh, since the house is already existing and it was built the standard Tanzanian way. So uh, what that means is this concrete platform that the house is on is actually a bunch of red mud bricks with concrete slapped over the side of it. It has a lot of hollow spots and a lot of bugs and things like that have burrowed their way through and come up through the floor. So there have been a lot of floor repairs. In addition to that, the walls of the house are red mud brick and then they have a concrete plaster that's thrown on the, the surface of it. And it's very rough, but also in this extreme dry environment, it has dried out and crumbles a lot. In addition to that, a lot of critters enjoy eating this concrete uh, plaster material uh, because it has a lot of minerals that they uh, that they need for survival. Uh, the house itself has no running water, no electricity at this time, and uh, it features two rooms which are roughly eight and a half feet by eight feet, giving me a total of around 136 square feet. So. They have Tiny House Nation that they do in America, and I'm going to be showing you Tiny House Nation here in Tanzania. Kiribu, Yubani, Kidogo. Asante. All right, we're going to enter the house now, and uh, as we come up, we see one of the problems that will need to be addressed at some point down the road, and that is the fact that they never put a first step on. Uh, and so right now I just have a rock there uh, and it moves around on me a little bit uh, but eventually we will be putting a, a additional step on here so it'll be a little bit safer. As we come in we see that there was originally some rock damage to the door frame. Uh, they do doors here quite a bit differently. They put this uh, basically frame in and then plaster with the concrete plaster around it and that's what's supposed to hold it. Unfortunately over time it works itself loose and uh, causes a lot of problems. In addition, a lot of those insects I talked about came up and ate the wood. Um, in addition, they rarely ever screw in their hinges. Now as we come in, uh, we'll notice that the, the concrete plastered wall, some of it has some paint on it. Uh, it's in pretty bad shape right now. Uh, I have come across some gypsum drywall plaster. This is a test area. Uh, where we're going to coat the entire area with gypsum drywall plaster and then repaint. There are no ceilings uh, and this is a tin roof and that's an open ridge vent. As you can see we've had various critter problems in the past and still continue to fight them. Uh, I've gotten rid of most of the bats that lived in here but immediately after they left came in some mole looking creatures and in addition to them are some lizards. Uh, so we still have some problems along those lines. Uh, and here is a vent that's put directly over the window. Now the window has no panes. It's just basically hardware screen and mosquito screen that we've installed recently and then the bars for security and then some wooden shutters that you can close for light and a little bit of wind protection. Um, now they put these vents directly over these windows all the time and unfortunately all those serve as a great place for bats and bees to nest and serve no other real good purpose because of the window right below providing all the ventilation you could possibly want. And since there is no ceiling, it's not providing ventilation for an attic. The ridge vent, which allows all kinds of critters to enter the building, is the main ventilation for the roof itself. And there is basically no way I can get that ridge vent completely sealed. Uh, as we come down, we see I've done a little bit of decorating. And there's my one door. Um, and I'm going to apologize. The rooms aren't big enough for me to get all the way back for you to see most everything. But there is a plastic table I bought in town and my plastic chair. I have a gas tank, LP gas tank, and a small gas stove that I use. 
uh, and I can only go into a major town and get that refilled. Um, you'll notice that the majority of stuff on my table uh, is sealed up. All my plates and things like that are in containers. In addition, uh, all my spoons, forks, and knives are in some type of container that I can seal up. The reason for this is because the critters that get in the house, they crap all over everything. So you do this to try and protect everything that you can. In addition to that, I seal up all the food because those critters will eat anything they possibly can. Uh, if you don't seal something up, regardless of what it is, they will gnaw on it and rip the covers off, if nothing else. You can see from the damage that they've done to this uh, tea box that I have now put all the tea bags in a sealed container. They just sit there and chewed on it one night. Okay, now we're going to go through the one door and into the bedroom. You'll notice it's kind of dark in here, and it normally is. Um, I have recently upgraded my bedspread and things like that to try and add a little bit of spunk and things of that nature. Uh, the bed I made myself, though I haven't varnished it yet, that's because I'm going to tear it apart when we start building new furniture and reuse components of it, but not the entire thing. Uh, I hang as much of the, the clothes as I can up on the walls. And then as you notice, I have a laundry string going across here so I can dry clothes that have been washed recently. Uh, again, everything is sealed up as much as possible. There's where I keep all my clean clothes. Uh, there's the dirty hamper. On top of it are the clothes for tonight and of course my daily work clothes, uh, which I reuse for most of the week. Um, then you have a bag where I keep a lot of the craft supplies and things of that nature. Normally it's under the bed, but since we recently uh, cleaned up everything to get ready uh, to shift things around for the plaster and the painting, I left it out. And after that is the bag I keep all of the things I have to buy in the U.S. and dole out over the year because I can't get them here. Uh, things like dandruff shampoo, um, good antiperspirant, things of that nature. On top of the bag for crafts, which something may surprise you, is um, those are winter clothes. Sweatshirt, long pants, things of that nature to wear at night. We have roughly about a... 50 to 70 degree swing from the middle of the day until night and then at about three o'clock in the morning it's normally in the low 50s and after being up around 120 during the day you can imagine it gets a little cool in here so not only do i have a wool blanket left over from the peru runs uh, i have the comforter and then i have some winter clothes because these windows leak like a sieve and it gets rather cold in here at night one of the problems we have with space in a small house like this are the number of projects that are ongoing. Uh, some of the things I do here are crochet classes. In addition to that, I make a lot of craft projects to try and teach people how to recycle materials. The biggest problem is that I have to collect the recycled materials and store them in my house. Right now, those are two separate projects going on. One is a catch game for kids made of Coke bottles, plastic Coke bottles. And the other one are the large water bottles, which I'm going to show people how to make furniture from it. Uh, so they eat up a lot of my room here in the small house.